From the Digital Media Soundstage at Wellington High School, welcome to another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes. Today's show is being brought to you by the Scent Depot, located at 132 West Herrick in downtown Wellington. Today we are continuing with our Thrive series and the Mind Body Spirit project, and the two ladies on my immediate left and right you should recognize because they've both already been on Dialogue with the Dukes talking about uh, Thrive and the Mind Body Spirit project. Introducing to my immediate left is Debbie Kelly. She's from the Rural Response Network and Liz Walensky, who is from the Educational Service Center. Welcome, ladies. Glad to have you back with us again. Um, today, the subject of our actual episode is called A Dose of Knowledge. And with A Dose of Knowledge, we're going to be talking about a survey that actually takes, that has, that has taken place. We're going to talk with one of the students who recently viewed one of the presentations by Mr. Joseph Cross. He's a CVS pharmacist out of Oberlin. And then we're going to talk about several, I think about six subjects uh, concerning the use of drugs or the misuse of drugs and so on and what it does to your brain. So first of all, we're going to take it, uh, send it over to Liz, who's going to talk about a statewide survey that took place just, just recently. recently. All right. So there is a um, survey for youth that actually it's been around for a while. It's called the OES, which stands for the Ohio Healthy Youth Environment Survey. And this is a survey that asks several questions of young people about not just, um, so it asks about health, it asks about school safety, academics, family relationships, friendships, but it also asks about mental health and substance use, which of course is the topic for today. Um, Wellington was one of many districts that participated in the survey twice within the last year. They participated in it last fall. We had 7th and 8th graders at McCormick and 9th and 11th graders at the high school um, take it last spring. And then we um, did a second survey with that same, that same class set up um, between November and December of this year and we do have the spring results back and what's really nice about this survey is every district gets their own data but we also get statewide data and so we um, can kind of get a gauge on how youth are doing across the board and so I'm going to focus specifically on the statewide data and Wellington's data is included in that. Um, so again, our subject today is substance use, particularly the video, um, A Dose of Knowledge and the presentation that Mr. Cross did. And so there was that focus on prescription drug use. And so the, the OES is intended for kids in grades seven through 12. And from that spring administration, 2.8% of students um, shared that at some point in time, they had taken a non-prescribed drug, so a drug that was prescribed to somebody else. It could have came from a family member. It could have came from their medicine, you know, from their medicine chest in their house. It could have been given to them by a peer or um, another adult. Honest, to be honest, we felt like as we were having a conversation, Debbie, myself, and Mr. Cross were having this conversation, we felt that that number might be underreported. Um, and just to kind of throw in here, you know, when we talk about prescription drug use, a lot of kids are like, why are we having this conversation as seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth graders? And so one statistic that's really important in all of this is the reason why we have this conversation is that 90% of adults of adults who are mis who are um, misusing drugs or alcohol have started use before the age of 18. So the prescription drug and the opiate conversation, which again, Ms. Kelly will talk more in detail about, it is an important, this is why it's an important conversation for us to have. And, you know, we unfortunately, especially with the opiate epidemic, um, there's very few people who haven't been touched by it, whether it's a family member or whether it's a friend, neighbor, or a relative. Um, 
just some other data from that survey that I think it's important to share and it kind of goes along with the prescription use is that in regards to another question on that survey is over-the-counter medication misuse mm -hmm. and again in that same survey last, last spring 7.27 percent of the students acknowledged that they had misused over-the-counter medication and so that could be like for instance Benadryl um, we do know that alcohol continues to be the most abused substance by youth and in regards to alcohol and again I still question whether this might be an underreported number a little more accurate than say the prescription number but almost 32 percent of youth are reporting that they have experimented or tried alcohol at some point in your life and an even more concerning number so from that 32 percent of kids who said that they had used almost 12 percent said that they had they had tried it for the first time at the age of eight or younger which is very concerning because if you go back to that 90 percent statistic for adults who are using you know they, their use started when they were young we've got people as young as eight years old or even younger who are um, experimenting. And then another important number, because again, just like with alcohol, right behind alcohol is marijuana. And we know that we're in a state where medical marijuana is now legal. There's all sorts, we're not gonna be getting into that today, but there's all sorts of concerns with that. And we know that with that, which again, I believe this is a very underreported number too, um, just a little over 6% of the students who took the survey said that they had tried it at some point in their life. So the data is concerning regardless. Again, you know, we can only go by what kids are telling us. This is an anonymous survey, but this survey tells us even though, like for instance, that prescription number is low, we all anticipate it's much higher. We need to have these conversations. We need to have these conversations, you know, as or maybe even earlier right now we're, we're starting these conversations around the seventh grade i know there's still dare programming that goes on in fifth grade but these are conversations that we need to continually have to help keep our young people safe well thank you uh ms walensky for providing all those numbers and they really are uh, eye-opening to lack for lack of a better term and the fact that they're maybe underreported that's also kind of dangerous to think about mm -hmm. Now, in the interest of keeping it uh, fresh, as my wife likes to say, we're now bringing in a student who viewed uh, Mr. Cross's presentation. And uh, instead of me asking questions, we're going to turn it over to Debbie Allen to ask Baron Turner questions about what he viewed during the presentation and how he actually viewed it, whether it was a positive or a negative, or was it something that was useful? So Liz, we'll... Excuse me, Debbie, That's I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> Debbie, will toss it over to you and let you do all the interviewing now. Okay, I roll in late. So um, just to clarify, uh, Pharmacist Teach is a national program from CVS. They presented a specific program to students and educators called A Dose of Knowledge, our topic for today, which is really about prescription drug misuse, um, the teenage brain, and the effects of substance use on the brain, and then finishes with some... Um, coping skills and peer refusal skills and things like that. So, Baron, you had the opportunity to see Mr. Cross on Tuesday. Just what was your overall impression? Um, I feel like it was really helpful to understand the, like, the logical and statistical point of how much it can affect people by misusing drugs and how, like, how much of a toll it can take on the body and further using it. So, Baron, were you surprised at the topic? When you, um, when you were? When we first realized that we were about to have the presentation, we were a little stunned because it felt like we had talked about it already. But then once we got deeper into actually learning about like what it does to you, it was, it was somewhat surprising. Okay. And I, and I ask that because of Mrs. Wilansky um, starting this discussion with the fact that sometimes people question why we do something about opioids when a lot of youth do not report that they use that. So if you can think back to the presentation, what would be your sort of three takeaway points? Like what really stuck with you afterward? Um, it's, a, it's a big problem. It's more of a problem than what like a normal teenage person would see. And something's got to change at this point because that's really killing our, our I don't know how to say it. Um, 
huge impact. Yeah. Really. Absolutely. It's really it's really taking a toll on the population and how many people actually like lose their lives over it is it's not worth it. I feel like that people should really like pay more attention to what they put into their body and if like that's what you need or not, not just do it because of impulse. Great. Yeah, when when he said that some people have used drugs so much that they can't function normally without them. That's when it was really an eye opener. Like, okay, this is a, a real big problem. Absolutely. So uh, Mr. Cross talked at the end about some things that you can do. He talked about healthy decision making and really um, a key point. I think why another reason that we presented it to um, young adults is the brain. Do you remember when he said about the brain and development and being under construction when a, when a teen's brain is fully developed? Can you share yes. that? Um, he said uh, a brain is not fully developed until 25 years old and while it's under construction then you have possibility to like lose nerve, nerve function and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, it's great that you remembered that. Maybe that science does help. Um, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, I mean, we, we really um, like to talk about that with young people because your decision making is different just from plain old growth and development. And so I think um, when he talked about the decision making skills at the end, it was in the context of impulsive behavior, risk taking, not always thinking first before we act as young people. Do you remember any of the skills that he talked about or ways to get out um, of the situation in a social situation? He showed us multiple ways of turning it down and just saying no. I mean, some people have the confidence to blatantly just say no and walk away from the situation, whereas the others are more of a change the subject type of person or just talk about something different. Awesome. So one thing that he didn't really cover, so this is a little new, but Liz and I wanted to make the point here is that he really talked about um, use in social situations and how to extricate yourself. But we found in the survey that Liz um, talked about that many people use because of their own mental health and um, anxiety and emotional issues. And so sometimes it's not a matter of a, a party, a drinking party or people, you know, um, using in those situations, but more watching parents or other adults relieve stress with drinking or other drugs. And so I think another tool that we just wanted to put out there was to make sure that you are trying to manage anxiety and stress and, you know, talk to trusted adults, journal, um, develop a hobby, get involved in sports and physical activity, talk to a professional if needed. So you wouldn't have learned that there, but it was one thing that I wanted to make the point of. Um, any last lasting impressions you want to share? I mean, do you think it was worthwhile? What do you think would be helpful in the future on this topic? Um, I feel like the presentation was, it was everything that we needed to take away from it. And what I got from it has really changed my, like my sight of how I see people using drugs. Great. That's a great point to end on. Well, I'd like to thank you, Baron, for coming in. I know this was a big surprise to you when you walked in today. Um, but again, as we, we, we try to bring up, you know, from a student point of view especially, and from an athlete's point of view, as you are, um, I think it's very important. You brought, I thought one of the things that I got from him was what you said about what you put into your body is what's so important, especially for an athlete like you and all the athletes on all the teams here at Wellington High School. We'll be back with the second portion of Dialogue with the Dukes. Do you have a hard time trying to find good skincare products such as lotions or even bath salts? Then Scent Depot is the place for you. They have a variety of lotions, soaps, and more. It's located at 132 West Herrick Avenue, Wellington, Ohio 44090. Their website is www.shopscentdepot.com. You can contact them at Scent Depot. Wellington at gmail.com for more information. We are back. We hope that you attend or go to the Scent Depot located at 132 West Herrick. They have a lot, a lot of products, but especially skincare products that uh, are very good, especially for the skin and so on. So if you'd like to look at their products, go to the Scent Depot located at 132 West Herrick in downtown Wellington. We've been talking with Debbie Allen and Liz Walensky about the survey that was taking place here recently, uh, statewide as a matter of fact, and also we talked with Baron Turner about what his actual take was from the presentation by Mr. Joseph Cross, 
the pharmacist from uh, CVS in uh, Oberlin. So now we'd like to go through some key points uh, that were taken uh, from not only the survey, but also from the presentation by Mr. Cross. And the first one's gonna be, um, are prescription pain pills uh, really safer than illicit or street drugs uh, that you find out on the street? So in general, prescription pain medications when um, ordered and monitored by a doctor are generally safe. Um, if they're taken for too long, too high of a dose, or misused, they can be very serious, the same as illicit drugs, and have um, side effects, including addiction or substance use disorder. Okay. Um, another key point, uh, what is prescription medication misuse? What, is, what, what does that term actually mean? So misuse a prescription medication can en encompass several things. If you take it for a non-medical purpose, if you take a prescription that is not yours, if you take a prescription um, other than the way that a physician prescribed it to you, so taking a higher dose, taking them closer together, using it in a different way, like um, crushing a pill to snort it instead of taking it orally, that is what we generally refer to as misuse. Okay. Um, now, you talk about misuse and so on. Now, what is a, a uh, I guess the best way to put it, a, a substance use disorder? So substance use disorder is actually a chronic medical condition that is treatable. Um, it's important to emphasize that substance use disorder or addiction, as it used to be called, is not a character flaw, it's not a choice, it's not sort of a moral issue. Many people in our society view it that way. But substances, including prescription pain medications, operate on our pleasure center in our brain. And so basically it causes a flood of neurotransmitters, specifically dopamine, over time that actually changes the structure and function of our brain. Mm -hmm. When that happens, um, using the drug um, becomes paramount over many other things. We've probably all seen that and, and um, becomes the, the primary function. And really, substance use disorder is when it's like a hijacking of the brain, mm -hmm. but it's actually a medical condition. Yeah, well, Liz, I know, I know you had some comments to make. Yeah, so I know one of the things, and, and Debbie will get into this more, she had mentioned in one of the earlier segments concern about self medicating. And sometimes substance use disorders do start as a result of self medicating, and the self medicating could be for a mental health disorder. Um, the most common mental health disorder is depression, and then anxiety is um, the second most common disorder. And one of the things that we have seen in teens over the past couple of years, there was a U.S. Surgeons Youth Mental Health Report that came out in December of 2021. And something that we just need to stay aware of is that um, we've seen a 20% increase over the course of the pandemic in anxiety among young people and a 25% increase over that same period in depression among young people. And that's ages three to 17. And so another reason why it's important for us to have these conversations because unfortunately sometimes um, they seek out those illicit drugs or prescription drugs in order to medicate those symptoms. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, finally, uh, we know that prescription drug and illicit drugs are a big problem throughout the entire society, but we are focusing today specifically on, as you said, the three, uh, grade three all the way up to 17, uh, and, may, and we hope not any younger than that, uh, mm -hmm. but we know that teenagers do have a problem. Why are teenagers at risk? So we touched on this a little bit when Baird and I spoke, but the teenage brain is still under construction. So just developmentally, the prefrontal cortex, which is the front part of your brain, um, responsible for decision making, judgment, impulse control, is not developed until the age of 25. So decisions prior to that are generally um, much more influenced by hormones, by emotions, um, and so behavior tends to be more impulsive and more risky. And so it's really important both because of the 90% um, statistic that Liz mentioned, and also the, um, you know, sort of the self-medication and the, the dangers that we focus on adolescents because while they might not be um, as able to make really good decisions because of their brain development, it's the time they most have to mm -hmm. weigh them in. So I think um, knowledge is power and they're um, just susceptible because of their age. Hence, hence the name of our episode today, A Dose of Knowledge. We would like to thank uh, both Liz Walensky from the Educational Services uh, Center and uh, Debbie Allen from the Rural Response Network for coming in and talking to us. And we'd also like to thank Baron Turner 
for coming in and giving it the, the, the students' perspective from the presentation that they just recently received this week and what it meant to him and hopefully to all the students here at Wellington High School and McCormick Middle School. We'll be back again very soon, again, with another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes.